Afternoon YouTube. It's Tony the Leyland Biker. And it's the Saturday after the EU referendum. And my country's been taken in by bullshit and right-wing propaganda. And we've been good little lap dogs to Mr. Murdoch. And we've left the European Union. What the hell were people thinking? Um, it's been in the press for the last 24 hours that a lot of people who voted leave now wish they didn't because they were using it as a protest vote against Mr Cameron. Well, it was made pretty clear throughout this referendum that if we voted out, it meant out. Now, what were these people thinking? Have they no idea how a vote works? Or did they think it was like Strictly fucking come dancing? Or Britain's Got Talent? Where Simon Cowell or some other overpriced brainless bimbo threw the casting vote? That's not how elections and referenda work. You know, you make your vote, and then that's it. You're stuck with it. So all these brainless idiots who thought, oh, we'll never vote to leave Europe, voted to leave Europe, and now by 4%, we're leaving fucking Europe. Well, I know what's going to happen, I don't don't you? You know, they're going to be going to Ayanapa next year for the holidays, or Ibiza, or wherever, and all of a sudden they're going to need to get a visa. They're going to have to go through passport controls. They're going to lose their free duty free. Um, what the fuck did they think was going to happen if we voted to leave the EU? That they turn around and say, oh, you can have everything you want. Of course not. The European Union are going to do their damnedest to fuck us. And they're going to try and fuck us really badly. You know, we've screwed with our lovely little union. We had everything we wanted. We had access to the single market. We had freedom of travel across Europe without visas. We had an opt-out to further political integration. We had an opt-out from the Eurozone. And now these stupid people who thought that they could vote in a referendum as a protest and this isn't pointed out at the genuine Leave voters. I know there are some people out there who have voted Leave and been pro-Leave for years. Then there's people like me who've been pro-European but sceptical. Um, what annoys me is a lot of these people have voted Leave in the referendum with no idea about what they were voting on. They're going, oh, well, it's a sovereignty issue. Yet most of them can't actually answer what the sovereignty issue is about Europe. They go, oh, well, it's all these unelected bureaucrats. Well, we have enough of them in the UK, and they perform the same rule. It's called the civil service. If they'd been complaining about Europe being, to a degree, a single-party state, where it is a politics of status quo, rather than what we would call a party political democracy, then yeah, they would have had a point about sovereignty. But I haven't heard any of the vote leavers mention that issue. If there had been mentioning about the fact that the three most senior posts 
in Europe, the presidents of the commission, of the councils and commission and the parliament are basically one man is put forward. They'd have a, they'd have a point about it being undemocratic if they had a complained about how judges get onto the European court. They would have had a point about dem democratic. But they didn't. You know, the true democratic deficits in Europe were never mentioned in this debate. And then you had this spurious figure of 350 million a week. But Europe costs each of us round about the price of three pints of beer a month. Now, not being funny, my Esther to go to the United States for two weeks this summer cost more than that over the year. So, even if we just looked at it as a bit for the visa tree traffic, it's worthwhile. But they were screaming 350 million, 350 million. It's actually around about 100 million a week. Um, what we contribute to Europe. You know, and we get around about 200 million back. You know, so we contribute around about 100 million and the rebate and our various grants and what they give farmers rural areas, regional development agencies and stuff like that is the rest of it. So, you've been lied to on the money issue. Now what gets me is there was no one from the EU coming out and refuting this 350 million figure. You know, where was Mr Junkers? Where's Mr Schultz? You know, where was Mr Tusk? Were they standing up in Brussels and saying, well, you know, I do believe that you'll find that vote leave are lying and put the real figures out there. They were singularly silent. Now, personally, I think they were sat on their hands thinking, oh, well, you know, there is no way the United Kingdom will ever leave the European Union. We don't have to worry. Well, Take a look at what you've shown, Mr. Yunkers. Yeah, we have left the EU. Your budget's fucked, our economy's fucked, and your economy's going to be fucked. So, putting on too fine a point on it, no one's won. We've lost. The EU's lost. What worries me now is you're going to get a cascade effect. You know, there's a lot of Eurosceptic parties in Europe who are where our Eurosceptics were five years ago. And now they've seen one country go, they're not going to stop. You know, there's a good chance Jean-Marie Le Pen, Marine Le Pen, sorry, um, is going to get the second highest poll in France in their presidential elections next year. So, what next? Could it be France? Are we going to get to a point where Mr Hollande has to do a deal, or his successor has to do a deal with Mrs Le Pen? Ms Le Pen, I should say. And the price she wants for that deal happens to be a referendum. So I'll tell you now, France could well go the same way as the United Kingdom. Sweden and Denmark are very, very Eurosceptical. And I do think, although the Polish government might not be too Euros, you know, might not see themselves as a Eurosceptical nation, speaking to a few Poles that I know, they say the exact opposite. So then you could land up with an alternative European Union, one which goes back to the old EEC. which is really all Britain wanted to be in anyway. But Mr Major got conned into signing Maastricht, um, which I honestly think was a mistake. I don't think we should have gone into Maastricht in 92 and then we wouldn't be having this issue now. 
but I hold the behaviour of the senior officials of the European Union as much response, as much responsible for running a crap campaign to convince the British to remain as I do David Cameron and some I admire absolutely immensely for his, you know, ethical stance, Mr Corbyn, but as a leader he's been absolutely bloody hopeless. I didn't expect much off Cameron. You know, I always knew he was a characterless, charmless little oink. And it's so annoying that this whole thing's come about because basically two old Etonians were having an argument about who's having the biggest dick. You know, cock waving. The only problem is they put our country's future at fault. Now, the fallout from this isn't going to affect me. Most people in my generation we're old enough, comfortable enough and secure enough to be able to weather whatever throws at us. What I feel sorry about are that generation who are growing up now. You know, my three month old great nephew, his generation, my nieces and nephew's generation. They're the ones who are going to suffer. So people of my age in their 50s and older who seem to be the demographic who've been most vote leave Thank you for screwing up your descendants' future. Um, because in all honesty, that's what you've done. And as one young person, former student of mine, said today on Facebook, the bo baby boomers have screwed us again. They got all the good jobs, got all the state pensions, and now they've fucked our future. Now, that's an awfully bitter thing for a 22-year-old to be saying. An awfully bitter thing for a 22-year-old to be saying. But this is someone who's worked his arse off to get to university. He's now in his second year of an engineering degree. He's somewhere in the region of £30,000 in debt for a tuition fees. And probably going to be another 10,000 in debt by the time he finishes with his student loans. So you're going to have someone at 23 years old who's £40,000 in debt and my generation and the generation above mine who got everything to a degree um, have ruined their future. Because that's what it feels like to them. So, think about what you've done, eh, folks? Um, if you voted in your self-interest, or you voted to stick one up with Mr Cameron, you voted for the wrong reasons. You should have been voting for the good of the country and putting the future of the generations to come forward, not petty self-interest and political rank and party political wrangling this wasn't about party political wrangling it was about the future and an awful lot of you 52 percent of you well i'd say less than that i'd say you know 30 percent of you i generally believe that there's 20 percent who believe they've done exactly the right thing um, but i think 30 percent of you have just been taken for a ride I think you've gullibly swallowed every piece of shit that the Murdoch press has presented you with. And now the generations to come are going to have to pick up the mess of the fallout. Because I don't think we've made the world a safer place. I think we've made the world a more dangerous place. Um, we've removed one of the EU's key military assets. Um, we've got the most powerful and most experienced military within the EU and we've ripped it out. Um, our two biggest trading pa partners are the US and Europe and we've just headbutted one of them. 
And if President Trump gets in in Europe, in America, you know, who's to say that their economy is going to be in any shape? So, I'm bitterly disappointed about the outcome. Uh, I think we've made a complete and utter enormous mistake. So, toodaloo. Um, and uh, I'm sorry about what's happened to anyone in Europe who's watching this. Um, we're not all a bunch of bigoted, racist, xenophobes. Unfortunately, we are quite a gullible nation and the Murdoch press won this round. Because the only person who's celebrating tonight is Rupert Murdoch. Cheerio.